again how God created it by hand from mighty mountains to the raging sea to every leaf on every single tree it's in the holy book just open up and take a look In the beginning, there was God. The earth was empty and dark. God looked over the surface of the world. It was time for something to happen. Let there be light. And the earth became light. I shall call the light day and the darkness night. And so there had been darkness and then light. And that was the world's very first day. Now, God was just getting started. The next thing to do was to make the sky above the world and to fill the sky with clouds. And that was the second day of the world. On the third day, God separated the water from the dry land. God made all kinds of things to put on the land. There were rocks and mountains, valleys, deserts, and beaches. There were big islands and little islands. There were oceans and seas, rivers and lakes. But there was still more to come on the third day because God wasn't done yet. It was time to make all the plants. God made tall trees and short bushes, vines, ferns, leaves and flowers. God gave all the flowers a different size, color, shape, and smell. And all the grasses and plants and trees that make seeds and fruits were made on the third day too. On the fourth day, God made a brilliant light in the sky called the sun to light up the day. And a silvery one called the moon to add some light to the nighttime. And as a special touch, God added billions of twinkling stars to the night. On the fifth day, God made some creatures to live in this beautiful world. There were birds, and more birds.
and more birds. And in the rivers and oceans and seas and lakes, God made fish. And the oceans were full of all sorts of amazing creatures. But there was still a lot more for God to do. On the sixth day, it was time to make the rest of the animals. There were so many animals to make. animals, and small animals. There were spotted animals. and horned animals. God's animals was beautiful. Now, on this sixth day, God did something else that was very important. God created the first man. And that man was called Adam. Then God blew the breath of life right into Adam. Where am I? Welcome to the world, Adam. Who are you? I am God. Look around you. All the plants of the earth and all their seeds and all their fruits, I give them to you. And all the animals, you have power over them as well. Everything is yours to use, to care for, and protect. Mm. Sit, uh, uh, sit, please. <coughs> <laughs> God looked over everything and was happy, and on the seventh day, God rested. Ah, it is very good. <laughs> Now, God wanted Adam to live in the most wonderful place that could ever be. So God planted a beautiful garden for Adam to live in. 
It was called the Garden of Eden. God made a great river run through the garden, and then the river split into four great rivers. Adam had all the animals for company in the garden. <laughs> well, uh, uh, excuse me. Adam's first job was to name all the animals. This new request from God sounds like it's quite a job. I'm going to be as busy as a, a bee. I've got to search my brain and come up with a name for every living, breathing thing I see. You with the large brown spots Eating from treetops, your neck is the biggest part of you. Twisting round so easily, I believe your name will be Stretchy. Now that's pretty catchy. Or perhaps Giraffe will do. The jungle must be long to one so fierce and strong. I shiver and tremble at your growl. So you with the flowing mane, I give you the kingly name, Rory. No, that fits you poorly. Maybe lion is fine for now. Those flippy flappy things, I think I'll call them wings. And creatures they're attached to will be birds. The red breast will be robin, ostrich that big odd one. Parrot is the clawed one who repeats all my words. I'd say your fancy shell protects you very well, although it can slow you down a bit. So you with the scaly skin, I name you and all your kin. Pokey, not too hokey. Know your wordle, be turtle, yeah, just right. The swimmers in the sea, Will mostly fishes be with whale and snail and lobster one and all? The orange one is goldfish, cod the ice cold fish, tadpole has the bold wish of one day being thrall. The way you jump around, you hardly touch the ground and scamper so fast you're just a blur. So you with the cotton tail, you'll be known on every trail as Hopper. No, that's not proper. Oh, I have it, your rabbit, for sure. It's still early in the day, and I'm well on my way to naming every animal I know. Why, there's only half a million more to go. Looks like you've got a dear friend. I'd like to have a friend, too. <sighs> there were many animals to name. Adam grew very tired of trying to decide what to call each one. Now, God looked down on Adam sleeping there in the garden and Adam looked very alone. Hmm. And God decided that Adam needed a companion, someone to be with. God decided it was time to make another person, so God created woman. Hello, I'm 
mean, uh, hi. Uh, I mean, ah, uh, shucks. Where am I? You're in God's garden, the Garden of Eden. It's really nice here, you'll see. These are my friends, this is Monkey, and this is Dog, and this is, um, I haven't named you yet, have I? Gee, I guess you need a name too, don't you? How do you like Eve? Oh, it's lovely. Eve, I like it, and I like this place. Me too. You see, God made this garden for me. I mean, us, to live in. And everything's pretty, and you can eat anything you want, and... Not quite. Who was that? That was God. Oh. God's the one who made us. There is one fruit in all the garden that you may not eat. There is? This is the tree of knowledge of good and evil. You may eat of anything else in the garden, but you may not eat the fruit from this tree. Okay, tree of knowledge of good and evil. No eating. Absolutely no eating. Right. Anything else in the garden is okay, but not that tree. Definitely not that tree. Right. <laughs> and so Adam and Eve lived very happily in the Garden of Eden until one day. I'm so happy, life's a breeze, picking fruit from off the trees. La 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 la. Howdy. Oh, you startled me. Hello. What are you called? Why, I'm a serpent. Nice to meet ya. <laughs> nice to meet you, too. Nice day, isn't it? A very nice day. Nice tree, isn't it? A very nice tree. Nice fruit. Uh, um, I, I have to go now. No, you don't. We're just getting to know each other. You don't want to hurt my feelings, do you? Uh, no. Good, because I want us to be very good friends. Now, as I was saying, it's nice fruit, isn't it? You can eat it, you know. E eat what? You know what I'm talking about. The fruit of this tree. You can eat it. <laughs> the fruit of this tree? No, I can't eat that. Sure you can. It's easy. It tastes great. <laughs> We're not allowed to eat that. God said so. God said we'd be in big trouble if we ate that fruit. Nah, you won't be in trouble. God just doesn't want you to eat the fruit from this tree. Because if you eat it, you'll get smart. Like God. What's the matter? Are you a chicken? I'm not a chicken. Well then, why not give it a shot? Just one teeny tiny taste. <laughs> 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 
God probably won't even notice. <laughs> and this fruit, I'm telling you, is incredible. Um, no, I really can't. I'll never tell. Try it. Well, if it won't kill me, and it'll make me smart, maybe just one tiny taste. Sort of a lick, not even a bite, really. Oh, how bad could that be? Wow! Pretty good, huh? I've got to tell Adam about this. Adam! Adam! You'll never guess what just happened. What? You know the fruit? Which fruit? You know, the one we weren't supposed to eat. What about it? You didn't, did you? I did. Eve, how could you? Adam, it's great. I want you to try it too. That serpent over there told me all about it. I just took a little bite, that's all. But Eve will really get it if we eat that fruit. I didn't get it, did I? I, uh, I guess not. Just take a tiny bite. God's probably not even looking. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> I don't know. It was good, but suddenly I feel kind of scared. I just feel so, I don't know, so sort of naked. Good grief! I'm naked! <gasps> <laughs> That's better. What were we thinking? Uh oh. I think God's coming. I think we're in trouble. Big trouble. I think we're gonna get it now. We better hide. Uh -oh. Adam. Eve, what are you doing? We're, uh, hiding. Why? Well, we didn't want you to see us. We did a bad thing. We were scared. How did you know these things? Did you eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil? Well, yes, but it was her fault. She talked me into it. Uh, it wasn't my fault. That uh, serpent talked me into it. I am not happy. You have disobeyed me. We're sorry. We're really sorry. I'm not worried. What can happen to me? You, serpent, will <gasps> crawl on your belly and eat dust forever. Ah, no. You will fear people, and people will fear you. This is your punishment for all time. And you, Adam and Eve, because I trusted you and you disobeyed me, you must leave the garden. Life was easy for you here, but it will not be easy outside. You will have to work hard and your children will have to work hard. You will know what it means to hurt and suffer pain. Here are some garments to keep you warm after you leave the garden. Now go. God put an angel with a flaming sword at the entrance to the garden. So Adam and Eve could never go back. But even though Adam and Eve had disobeyed God, even though they had to leave the garden, God still loved them. I'm sorry, Eve. I'm sorry too, Adam. I guess we're all alone now. <laughs> Not quite alone. And thus began Adam and Eve's new life outside the garden. From then on, their life was filled with joy and sadness, good things and bad. 
But even though they could never go back to the garden, God did not abandon Adam and Eve. God always watched over them, wherever they went, forever after. Created it by hand From mighty mountains To the raging sea To every leaf On every single tree It's in the holy book Just open up and take a look It's a story A long time ago, there were many, many people on the earth. And everyone did whatever they wanted to without love for each other. They cared more about themselves than they did about other people. God was very sad because everyone had forgotten his way. Everyone, that is, except for Noah and his family. Noah and his family worked very hard, and they kept all of God's ways in their hearts. All right, that's enough for today. You boys can finish that tomorrow. Uh, uh, but Father, we almost had it. Just a few more minutes. God knows how hard you work, Japheth, my boy, and so do I. But God also wants us to keep up our strength so that we can do His work. You're right again, Father. You must be the wisest man in the world. Me? Oh, no. I might be the happiest man in the world, but the wisest? I think not. But enough talking. We'd better hurry. Ah, I think we're having your mother stew tonight. And we wouldn't want it to get cold. <laughs> Noah and his family had a hard life, but they loved each other very much, and they always had enough to eat. Noah never forgot that it was God who made all of those things possible. And thank you, God, for everything you've given to me and my family. Thank you for the strength to work hard, and for fields that are good for growing, and for the food on our table. Amen. 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 What's this? It sounds like we have visitors. Well, you must be hungry. Dear, will you please bring me a bit of meat and a bone from the stew? I think our friends need something to eat. All of God's creatures are important. There you go. Enjoy. Nothing like a good dinner, isn't that right? You're a good man, Noah. More? <laughs> <laughs> One night after supper, everyone kissed Noah goodnight and went to bed. But Noah didn't go to bed at his usual time. He had a strange feeling. You look sleepy, dear. Uh. Why don't you go to bed? Are you coming? Soon. I don't feel tired. 
I think I'll go out and look at the stars for a bit. Noah went out of his house for some fresh air. He had a feeling he couldn't explain. He didn't know that God was leading him outside. Ooh, what is this? Noah? God, is that you? Yes, Noah, it is. Please listen to the important things I have to say to you. Noah, people do not love one another as they should. So I have decided to wash the earth with a flood and start over. This is terrible news. Don't be afraid, Noah. I'm telling you this because you are the only man who still has me in his heart. I have chosen you and your family to help me start over. Listen carefully. I want you to build a boat, Noah, an ark. So much to do. Oh, I've got to get my boys and have them help me. Wake up! I need you to help me with a big project. Ooh. Yes, I'm serious. An ark. A big, big ark. <laughs> it's okay. Go ahead and laugh. You'll see. <laughs> this field should be big enough. Build it from fresh, sticky wood. Make it 450 feet long, 75 feet across, and 45 feet high. Seal the planks with tar. Inside, build an upper, middle, and lower deck. Hi, Father! Hi. Make an opening all the way around the ark, just below the upper deck. Yay! And last, Put a door in the side big enough for the largest animals of the earth to walk through. Next, bring two of every animal on the earth with you, each with a safe place on the ark.
Noah and his family worked very hard. Father, we're finished! Yay! Yay! Done well, my sons. Oh. Where is this old man who says a flood is coming? <laughs> Lead me to the crazy fool. My father is no fool. Only a fool would build a big silly boat in the middle of his field. <laughs> now let's take a good look at. <gasps> You really are a crazy old man. Anyone who would do this. You would be wise to listen to what I say. God has told me that a terrible flood is coming. So much to do, so little time. Father. It's fair to warn them, Shem. Warn us about what? The flood that's never coming? <laughs> Come on, let's get out of here. Let's Everybody leave this crazy old man Where's alone. The there, there now. Thank you for helping us. I guess we made ourselves some friends, eh? <laughs> and it looks like we have our first passengers. Now, if I can only figure out how we're going to find all the rest of the animals. Quiet now, you two. Can't you see he's trying to think? Father, look! It's a miracle! And it was a miracle. God had done something wonderful. He brought two of every animal to the ark and they were on their very best behavior. Even the lions lay down with the lambs. Tigers? Wildebeests? <laughs> Zebras? Whoa! <laughs> God will protect us all. Well, that does it. Everybody's here. What do we do now, Father? We wait for the rain. It doesn't look like we'll have to wait long, Father. Look! Suddenly, the clouds began to gather and cold winds began to blow. Time has come to take your family and the animals onto the ark. Soon the rain will start. Let's go! Everybody on? All clear down here. Ready. I'll close the door. Be afraid, my dear. God will protect us all.
The rain covered the whole earth. Even the highest mountains disappeared underwater. Except for the animals and people on the ark, there was nothing else left. During their long trip, Noah and his family became very close with the animals. They were all good friends. Groundhogs hide and monkeys climb and long-eared rabbits run. With this bunch, I have a hunch we'll have Fantastic fun. Hyenas laugh at the tired giraffes, skinny legs and neck. One to the news, the kangaroos with leapfrog up on deck. Noah and his floating suit sail the ocean to. watched to see when the rain would stop, but it just kept coming down. It rained and rained like it would never stop. It rained for a month, then another week. Then, after 40 days and 40 nights, the rain stopped. Noah was so excited, he called a family meeting. I've called you all here because I have a surprise for you. The rain has stopped. What? That's wonderful. <laughs> True. When do we get off? Well, I think if all goes well, the ground should start to peek through in about another, oh, six months or so. Everybody was disappointed to hear this news because although they all loved one another, they were all pretty tired of being on that ark. But they waited patiently. Many months passed.
Well, what did you see? What did you see? Same as always, uh... nothing but sea. We're never going to get off this boat. How are we even going to know if the land is dry? How are we even going to know if we're anywhere near land? This is hopeless. Now, what kind of talk is that? Are you the same men who helped me build God's Ark? Hasn't he looked out for us this long? Of course, Father is right. But can we at least try to find out if there's any dry land? This got Noah thinking. Finally, he got an idea. He went and got one of the ravens and brought him to the slit in the ark. Then he let him go. He thought if the raven found land, he might bring something back with him. But when the raven returned, he didn't bring anything with him. So Noah decided he would try letting a dove go. Good luck! <laughs> but the dove returned with nothing as well. Aww. But Noah knew God wouldn't abandon them. He waited a while longer, then one last time, he sent out the dove again. <laughs> this time, when the dove returned, hey! it brought something back. Oh, oh boy! Oh. In its mouth, it carried a branch from an olive tree. Father, this is wonderful news. We must be very close to dry land. Yes, son. If you believe in God, he will save us all. And you protected Yay! us too. <laughs> and sure enough, very soon, the ark landed on top of a tall mountain. When it was safe to come out, God spoke to Noah again. Noah, you and your family and the animals can come out now. The earth is dry. Go out into the world and have many children and tell them about me. And so you will always know that I won't ever flood the world again. I'm going to leave a gift in the sky after it rains. Something to remind you of my promise. And so Noah and his family thanked God for all he had done for them. And Noah's sons had many, many good and strong children who loved God very much.
Many years ago, in a land called Egypt, there lived a very mean king. Egyptian kings were called pharaohs. Faster, better, more. The Pharaoh made all of the people of Israel living in Egypt work as slaves. They had to build the buildings and lift many heavy things. They had no time to rest and little to eat. They were not free and they were very unhappy. But the worst thing of all was, one day the Pharaoh decided that the firstborn sons of the Israelites would be killed. Oh no! They won't get my baby. I'll find some way to save him. Jochebed, the mother of Moses, decided to float her baby down the river. Shh, don't be afraid. I won't let the Pharaoh hurt you. Your sister Miriam will be right here to make sure you're safe. baby needs a home. I'll take him to the palace and take care of him there. Excuse me, princess. If you need a nurse for the baby, I know a good one who lives nearby. Her name is Jochebed. Thank you. Bring her to the palace. They named the baby Moses, and he was raised in the Pharaoh's palace as an Egyptian. But Jochebed was near Moses while he was a child to teach him right from wrong. Ha ha! <coughs> Moses, time for your lessons. Now, did you do your homework? Sure I did. When I went out this morning, I saw a slave master hitting one of the Israelites. He was wrong, Moses. All people should be treated with respect. And Jochebed taught him that the Israelites in Egypt were unhappy because they were not free. Many years later, when Moses grew up to be a strong young man, he came upon some Egyptians who were treating people very poorly. You're lazy. Get up, get up and get back to work right now or else. Leave him alone. You shouldn't treat anyone like that. He deserves it. He's pretending he's hungry and tired because he's too lazy to work. I'm teaching him a lesson about... Leave him alone. It was very unusual for someone to help an Israelite like that. Everyone told each other what happened. Moses was sure he had done the right thing. But he knew the Pharaoh would be very angry. So Moses left Egypt all by himself, knowing that he was really an Israelite. He wanted to go to another land where he would not have to see his people be treated so badly. After traveling for 40 days, Moses found himself in the land of Midian.
In Midian, Moses got married and had a family. He lived in Midian for so long that he almost forgot about Egypt and about the poor Israelites. Until one day, Moses was looking after a flock of sheep up in the hills, and it was there that he saw an amazing sight. Come here, little guy. <laughs> I'll get you. <laughs> now I've got you. Huh? Moses, come closer. Uh, who's there? God. The Israelites in Egypt are unhappy because they are not free. Go to the Pharaoh and tell him to let my people go. Why have you chosen me? Don't be afraid. I will be with you. But will they believe me? I will give you signs to show the people that I am with you. Throw your staff on the ground. Now reach down and pick it up by the tail. Trust me, the people will believe you. Now go. And so Moses returned to Egypt to do what God said. Are you Moses? I have heard about you. What are you doing back here after all these years? I am here because God sent me. He wants you to free the people of Israel. Oh, he does, does he? Too bad for him. Who is this God, anyway? I've never heard of him. Have you? No, sir, your, your most royal, royal wonderful, wonderful highness. highness. Well, then. This god of yours must not exist, right? Yes, your most royal, wonderful highness. Right. You there, come here. We're too nice to the Israelites. After all, they have a big, strong god on their side. Tell my slave masters not to give them any more straw for the bricks they make. From now on, they have to find their own straw. Yes, your most royal wonderful. I said, go! Ha! Don't try and tell me what to do. I'm the Pharaoh. It's time for your bath, your royal highness. Uh... I won't give up that easily. And so Moses returned. God wants you to let the Israelites go free. Oh, haven't we already done this? It'll take a miracle before I listen to another word you're saying. See the power of God, the only true and living God. Oh! Silence! Nothing but foolish tricks. Besides, watch this. Think twice before you try to trick me again. I am not trying to trick you. I am warning you. God can perform many miracles. That proves nothing. Get out of my sight. I'll be back. And the next morning, Moses did come back. Pharaoh, let the Israelites go free. If you do not, God will let plagues happen to Egypt. The plagues will bring very bad things. No! See for yourself the power of God.
It is blood. Just another magic trick. Ugh. Go away. You? Again? What do you want now? Let my people go. If you don't, God will let frogs come all over the land. Frogs will sleep in your bed and eat your food and... Frogs? I love frogs. Why, when I was a little boy... Uh, never mind about that right now. Who cares about a few frogs? Get out of here! Find Moses and bring him to me. Now. You, make the frogs go away. Do you promise to let the Israelites go free? Yes, yes, just get rid of these pesky things. God made the frogs go away, but the Pharaoh didn't keep his promise. He did not free the people of Israel. So God allowed more plagues to happen in Egypt. God let lots and lots of gnats come to Egypt. They flew everywhere. Flies flew everywhere. But the Pharaoh still wouldn't let the Israelites go, so the animals got very sick. And then boils grew on the skins of the Egyptians. And terrible hail fell down from the skies. And the locusts came. And ate their clothes. Next, everything was as dark as night for three whole days. Each time a plague happened to Egypt, the Pharaoh promised to let the people of Israel go free. But each time he changed his mind and broke his promise. Now will you let the people of Israel leave? No, I will not. I've tried to warn you, but you won't listen. Please hear me now, or you'll be very sorry. The last plague will be the worst. The firstborn sons of the Egyptians will die. What has your God done? He has taken my son from me. Leave Egypt at once and take your people with you. Moses told the Israelites to get ready to leave Egypt right away. He knew the Pharaoh might change his mind again, so they packed and left as fast as they could. I can't believe we're actually going. It's just as Moses promised. A land where we could be free. It seems like a dream. But it's not a dream. At last, we're on our way home. Single file for a while, then scatter to and fro. Trusting Moses knows his way.
thousands of sandals in the sand. Mighty Moses, what an amazing sight. Leading us on to the promised land. Mighty Moses and the Israelites. Thousands of sandals in the sand. Mighty Moses, what an amazing sight. Leading us on to the promised land. And so, finally, the people of Israel left Egypt on the way to their homeland, the land of freedom. By day, a pillar of smoke guided them. And by night, a pillar of fire showed them the way. But back at the palace, the pharaoh had changed his mind again. I was a fool to let them go. Who will build our pyramids and grow our food and, and fan me when it is warm? We must get the Israelites back. Call my chariot. In the meantime, the Israelites had reached the Red Sea. Moses, look behind us! The Pharaoh's army! They'll be here soon! Oh no! Moses, what have you done to us? We would have been better off living unhappily in Egypt rather than dying here in the desert. Don't be afraid. God will protect us. Don't hurry, Moses. Rest tonight. Tomorrow morning, raise your hand and stretch out your staff over the sea. It will part, and you will be able to go through on dry land. Till morning, then we'll recapture them. And when morning came, Moses stood by the sea and waved his hand over the waters. And the sea parted, just as God had promised. Come on, follow me. Come again! What are we going to do? Just wait. Then the sea fell upon the Egyptian army and stopped them. Thank you, God, for saving us. The Israelites passed through the Sinai Desert on their way to the land of Israel. When they were hungry, God sent them food. Mother, look! What is it? It was sweet, tasty bread that God had sent to feed the people. The Israelites called it manna, which meant, what is it? Mm. When the Israelites were thirsty, God sent them water. I want 
milk instead. <laughs> <laughs> When the Israelites reached Mount Sinai in the middle of the desert, they set up camp near the foot of the mountain. It was time for God to give the people his laws. is happening, Moses? What does God want? God is calling me. I'm sure he has great plans for us. I must go ahead. And Moses climbed to the top of the mountain. I am ready for you. I have rules that I want to give the people of Israel. If they follow them, I will protect the people. Chisel out two stones and I will write them down. Always respect your father and mother. Do not kill anybody. Do not steal anything. God gave many other laws. He also told Moses how to build the home of worship where the Israelites would pray to God. God also told Moses that everybody should rest on the seventh day, just like he did when he created the world. Thank you, God. And this is how Moses led the people of Israel back to their homeland with the power of God and his sacred laws. These laws are called the Ten Commandments. Throughout the long journey, God helped Moses guide the Israelites home. In the land of Israel, there was a prophet named Jonah. A prophet taught other people about God and his love. Jonah told his friends and neighbors that God loved all people. And like God, Jonah tried to love all people and all creatures. This looks fresh today, Ophir. Yes, Jonah, the freshest you will ever meet or eat. You know how much I love eating fish. 
and I'll take a bag of peanuts. I see someone just as hungry as I am. <laughs> hungry, little dove? Here, take some of mine. We're all God's creatures. <laughs> Sounds like someone's having an argument. This is my pot. No, it is mine. I saw it first. No, I did. I needed to carry water. I needed to carry raisins. Stop. Fighting never solves anything. Oh, besides, you're making me dizzy. My friends, please. God doesn't want you fighting. It upsets him. Now neither of you gets the pot. You were acting badly, just like someone from the city of Nineveh. Do you want God to think we act like the Ninevites? Ah, no. no! No, Jonah. Sorry, Jonah. The Ninevites are enemies of our people. I heard they stole a boat full of fish. Come on, come on. Come on. Yes, they are thieves. Yes, they are very bad people. See what happens when you fight. From now on, we will act like Israelites and not be bad like the Ninevites. So Jonah had a very important job. He taught people about God's laws. There came a day when God had an even bigger job for Jonah. Hello, Jonah. God, it's nice to hear your voice. I have an important job for you. What is it? I will do anything for you. There are some people who are not obeying my laws, Jonah. Look what they're doing. The people of Nineveh steal. They are not kind to each other. The children of Nineveh do not take care of older people. <laughs> Others are lazy. And their king pretends not to see the problems. He only cares about eating all day and wearing fancy clothes. Yes, the Ninevites are bad. Send a flood or an earthquake to punish them. No, they are bad because they don't know about me. No one has taught them my laws. Jonah, your job is to go to Nineveh and tell them about me. Me? Go to Nineveh? I can't. Please give me some other job. Tell them of my love. But they are the enemies of my friends and neighbors. You must go, Jonah, right now. In 40 days, I will punish them for being bad. But if you're going to punish them, why should I go tell them about you at all? I don't understand. The Ninevites should be punished for being bad. But what if I tell them all about God and they change? Then maybe God won't punish them. I can't do something to help my enemies. Jonah was so confused, he asked his friends what he should do. You know, it's funny, Jonah. Usually, we come to you with questions. This time, I want to know what you think. How can I preach to the enemies of the Israelites? Simple. You can't. Oh, fear is right, Jonah. Don't go there. Don't tell them about God. You do have a problem, Jonah. If you don't preach to them, you disobey God. If you do preach to them, you'll disappoint all your friends. 
Nobody said being a prophet was easy, Ophir. <sighs> Wait, I know. I'll just hide from God. <laughs> sure, but where can you hide from God? Why, in your store, of course. I know my plan will work, Ophir. If I hide here for 40 days, then God will punish the Ninevites and no one will be mad at me. You call this a hiding place? Here, let me help you. Uh, Ophir, you don't have to go to that much trouble. Look, if you're going to hide from God, you've got to do it right. There! <laughs> and my shop's never been cleaner. Ophir, do you have any flour for baking biscuits? Yes, yes, in that basket. There. No! Wait! No! No! Now that everything's cleaned up, goodbye, Ophir. What? But, Jonah, why are you leaving? I'm in the way, and I can't hide from God here in Israel. It's the first place he'd look for me. So where will you go? As far away from Nineveh as I can. I'll travel to the other side of the world, to a city called Tarshish. God will never find me there. We'll miss you, Jonah. Thank you. I have a very lonely trip ahead of me because God will not be with me. So Jonah traveled as far away as he could to run away from God. First, he walked across dry deserts. Then he climbed high mountains. He finally came to the town of Joppa and found a ship that was going to sail for Tarshish. Captain, my name is Jonah. Can I sail with you to Tarshish? Sorry, Jonah. This ship only carries sailors and cargo. Besides, it's bad luck to bring a stranger on board, you know. The sailors on this ship weren't Israelites. They believed in many different gods. Ahoy, mate! Help me with this statue! Sir! Why not? <clears throat> what? Please, Captain, I must sail away with you. Why? Because I am running away from God. Why? Because he gave me a job to do and I won't do it. I must hide so he won't find me. Ah! <gasps> did you see that? A dove! He flew right to Jonah. A dove is a sign of good luck, Captain. Very good luck. With Jonah on board, we will have safe passage. They're right. Welcome aboard, Jonah. So Jonah set sail across the vast sea, headed to faraway Tarshish. Jonah saw that the sailors didn't pray to God. They worshiped statues made of stone. Excuse me, what are you doing? feeding the god of water. If he has a full stomach, he'll make the seas calm. But this isn't a god. <laughs> it's just a rock. My god is the real one. He created the sea, the sky, the animals, all of us, everything. One god created all that? <laughs> I don't think so, Jonah. See, this is the sun god, the god of the wind, the god of plenty. With so much in the world, you need a lot of gods. Yeah, no one god can rule over everything.
Yes, God does. He is the one and only God. Well then, if he is so wonderful, why are you running away from him? He wants me to go to Nineveh and tell them about him. But they are the enemies of my people, and we'd be better off without them. I've never seen a storm like that. Me either. We're in trouble. Whoa! to their gods, but the storm just grew stronger. Someone has brought our ship bad luck. Very bad luck. We must find out who it is. Let's throw lots. Then we'll know who brought this storm. The captain and his crew, being superstitious, believe that pieces of wood and bone would tell them who brought bad luck to their ship. There! The lots point to the man who brought us bad luck. <gasps> it's Jonah! Where did you come from? And who are your people? I am an Israelite, and I worship the God of heaven. I'm running away from him. And he has found you. Jonah, what can we do? How do we make the storm go away? Throw me overboard. You must save yourselves. Please, Captain. We have no choice. We must throw Jonah into the sea. His god is more powerful than any of our gods. Jonah, I'm sorry. We've done everything we could do. I know, Captain. It's not your fault. I made God angry. It's me, not you, who should be punished. God of the Israelites, we're sorry for having to throw Jonah into the sea. <laughs> Poor Jonah. May your God forgive you, Jonah. Jonah found himself in the whale's belly. Now he was really alone. God, I'm sorry for trying to hide from you. Do you hear me, God? Jonah prayed to God for three days and three nights. It's so dark inside this well And I'm lost at the bottom of the sea I was a fool to run from you Now I know just what you want from me In the belly of a whale One day has gone by I promise to be true And all you ask I'll do In the belly of a whale Oh please hear my cry Never will I Do 
After that, Jonah was no longer alone. Hello, Jonah. Oh, God. I'm so glad that you're here with me. You, you tried, tried to hide, hide from, from me. Oh, yes. And I now know that was really, really wrong. Jonah, you have learned your lesson. Come on, let's get you out of here. Jonah, Nineveh is behind that hill. Hurry, go tell them about me and about my love. God, I'm ready to do it now. So Jonah went to Nineveh, and what he had to say was so wonderful. All of the people listened. They believed, and best of all, they changed. God says we shouldn't steal from each other. We are all brothers and sisters in this world. Would you steal from your own family? God says we shouldn't hurt anyone weaker than us. Since we are all God's children, we should protect each other. <laughs> children, stop! God says we should honor our elders. Don't forget, they helped raise us and looked after us. Even the children were changed, and they gathered around Jonah, just like sheep around their shepherd. Hey, farmer! God says we all have jobs to do, and we should work hard. We should listen to him since he's the one who gave this wonderful world to us. O oh, king of the Ninevites, this is no way to lead your people. God tells us to care for one another. Ha! Why should I care what your God thinks? because he is going to punish everyone in this city for being bad. Nineveh will be like this grape. Please believe me, king of the Ninevites. I was sent by the one and the only God. You only have a few days. I do believe you, Jonah. Then know his love and obey his laws. That's all he wants. Jonah told the king all about God's laws. My people, people of Nineveh, hear me. For one week, all of us must fast. No one will eat anything for seven days, and all of us will wear rags. If we do this, we will show Jonah's God how sorry we are for acting so badly. After Jonah told the Ninevites about God and his laws, they changed their ways. Jonah then left the city. He sat on a hill above Nineveh to watch God punish them. Jonah, I'm proud of you. The Ninevites have changed their ways. But aren't you still going to punish them? I am not going to punish anyone, Jonah. But God, they are such bad people. Shouldn't they be punished? They have heard my voice through you, Jonah, and have changed their hearts. I love them as I love the Israelites, as I love all people. I was afraid of this. I saved the enemies of my people. Go home, Jonah. It will be okay. No, wait! Please, God, I am more confused than ever. Jonah didn't know what to do, where to go. He just started walking into the desert. Unfortunately, the desert was hot and he didn't have any food. I'm so tired, hungry, and thirsty. Thank you, God. Thank you for this plant and for saving me. The next morning, the plant was dead, and Jonah was mad. He was mad because God let a worm destroy the plant. Jonah, why are you angry? 
you let this wonderful plant die that gave me food and shelter, like you took away my hope yesterday when you didn't punish the Ninevites. You're mad because the plant is dead. You cared more about this small plant than the whole city of Nineveh, but you didn't do anything to keep it alive. So? How do you think I'd feel if I punished all the people of Nineveh? There are men, women, and children that I made and cared for over many years. They never knew or loved me until you came. Shouldn't I still care about them? Yes. Yes, you should. Go home and tell your friends about Nineveh and the plant. So Jonah went home. I can't wait to see my friends and eat all my favorite foods. Except for one food. <laughs> it's going to be a long time before I eat fish again. Jonah was accepted back by his friends, and he spent the rest of his life teaching about God's laws, and especially about God's love. A long time ago, Jesus traveled the land teaching people how to be good to each other and to love God. Many people listened and learned from his stories, but some didn't understand and had questions. What are you doing, Jesus? You are sitting with sinners. How can you be a teacher sent by God if you speak to tax collectors. These men take our money and give it to the emperor. We've even heard you eat with these men. They have turned their backs on God. I'm sure God will have nothing to do with them. Why should you? All people are special to God. Let me tell you a story. Once there was a shepherd with a hundred sheep, but he lost one of them. Jesus told how the shepherd wanted all of his lambs safe. He looked and looked. Until one day. The shepherd had a big celebration because he had found what he had lost. But Jesus, the shepherd, was just doing his job. There's more joy in heaven over someone who was lost and then found, who changes his life for God, than over 99 people who don't need to change. Jesus then told about a woman who had 10 silver coins. but she lost one of them. When the woman discovered she had lost the one coin, she was very upset. <laughs> she 
She spent the whole night looking for her lost coin. She told her friends and they celebrated. Because she had found what she had lost. That's the way God feels about people. In heaven, the angels sing whenever a person says he or she believes in God and wants to live a better life. But Jesus, in your stories, the shepherd and the poor woman lost valuable things. And all sinners, especially tax collectors, are worthless bad people. There's another story. A story about forgiveness and love. There was once a man who was both a wealthy farmer and a loving father. Father tried to teach them how to take care of things. Well, thank you, Reuben. But where is your... Even though his sons were very different, he loved them both the same. The father hoped they would grow up to be hard-working farmers. But as the younger son grew up, he dreamed of distant places. He didn't want to stay on his father's farm. The son decided to leave his home the very next day. Father! I had a wonderful dream last night. Really? What kind of... I was riding the finest horse in the city. Oh, the well, city's a nice place to visit, but... Everyone stared at me because I was handsome, smart, and wealthy. Yes, you are all of those. Father, farm life is fine for you. You're a farmer, but it's not for me. There are things I have to do. Places I have to see. You're leaving home? Yes, you have always promised my brother and me an inheritance, money for us. But it's for your future. Oh, please, Father, I want my money now. I must see the world, starting today. But the father did not want his son to leave. He would miss him a great deal. Thank you, Father. I'm rich! Hey, 
That's not fair. Benjamin can't take his money and leave like this. <sighs> if that's what he wants, he can do it. Don't worry about the farm, Father. Reuben will be here. But I care about you. I'll miss you, my son. I'll be all right. I'm going to see the world! Wave goodbye to your brother, Ruin. The father could only hope that one day he'd see his son again. No more dirty hands, no more backaches, and no more work. Isn't it magnificent? It was the son's first time out in the world, and he wanted to buy everything he saw. Well, what do you think? Now all I need is to be seen riding a magnificent horse. Thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, forty. You have bought the finest horse in my stable. Well, I deserve the best, you know. Uh, do you want that mule anymore? He reminds me of my father's farm. None of my horses are worth 40 coins. Why, this mule is worth twice that much. <laughs> the fool doesn't care how he spends his money. I see something else to buy. I don't care what it costs. I must be seen riding through the streets today. Whoa! Horsey! Whoa! Father, I've listed all of our animals. Thanks, Reuben. That was a lot of work. Uh, I was just thinking about your brother. I'm sure you miss him as much as I do. The son was still spending money. He hadn't learned his lesson yet. I'm sorry, you'll have to leave. I have customers waiting. I beg your pardon, sir. How about a big fluffy pillow? The boy still only thought about himself. Ladies and gentlemen, for your dining pleasure, 
the era and his funny monkey. <laughs> 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 I must have that monkey. <laughs> Whoa! Excuse me, sir, but you have stayed here for a week. Will you pay your bill? Oh, is money all you want? Uh-oh. Out. Get out of my inn. <laughs> this will pay for your bills. Benjamin was now alone and very hungry. Well, what am I going to do? For the first time in his life, the son had to beg for food. Ah, uh, no free food? The boy was so hungry, he needed to find work, any work. But the only job he could find was the worst possible. Watch it! Don't make, well, pigs of yourselves. Oh, I'm so hungry. <sighs> Thanks, little pig. Been acting so foolishly. A pigsty is fine if you're a pig, but it's not for me. At my father's farm, everyone, even the helpers, have a place to sleep, enough to eat. Wait a minute, I'll go home. Well, father won't want me back as a son, not after the way I treated him, but anything's better than this mess. Hey, he, he might give me a job on his farm. I'm never gonna snap my fingers like that ever again. So the son decided to go home, and he hoped that his father would not send him away. Thank God, he's come back. Sir, your son is coming home. Benjamin, my son is back. <laughs> My brother is back. This is a very bad idea. My father won't even want to talk to me. Uh-oh, too late. Is he going to be mad? Father, I'm sorry for leaving, and now I only ask to work in your fields. I shouldn't even be called your son anymore. Ah! <laughs> oh, welcome. Oh, welcome home. I'm so happy you're safe. What? Let's have a big party. Father? Uh, I don't understand. Send for food, lots of food, and get some musicians. 
my son has returned home. But the older son was jealous of his brother. Whoa! Out of my way. Tell me, is the banner hanging straight? No, it's all wrong. Everything's wrong. The father welcomed his lost son back home. And the son realized how much his father loved him. When I had it made Just a slave to a broken heart Till I found my father's open arms Feels so good to be home again No more roaming the world like the wind I won't go back to where I've been Feels so good to be home again Feels so good to be home again my boy is back, yes it's true Set the table, prepare the food Watch me dance, bless this day So good to know he's home to stay My lost son is home again No more roaming the world like the wind I don't care where he's been My lost son is here Son is home again. I never thought my father would welcome back a boy like me. Now I can hardly believe the celebration feast. My lost son is home again. No more roaming the world like a wind. I don't care. So good to be home again No more roaming the world like the wind I won't go back to where I've been Feel so good to be home again My lost son is home Where's Reuben? We can't celebrate without him. Hmm. You're missing Benjamin's party. I won't go. It's not fair. Father, I stayed with you and helped you with the farm, but you never gave me a party. But as soon as my lazy brother wanders back home, he gets a feast. My son, anytime you want a party, you'll get it. Huh? I love you with all my heart. But today is something special. Your brother has returned. Like the tree we planted when you both were little. In the winter it's empty and you might think it's dead, but in the spring it comes back to life. I'm happy because I thought my son was dead, but he's alive, and now he's safe here with us. Come, celebrate with me. No! I've been a thoughtless brother. 
Can you ever forgive me? <laughs> Welcome home, brother. The Father is like God. He is full of joy and forgiveness when someone decides to follow Him. No matter what we have done, who we are, God will always love us. Bah! We are not convinced. God even forgives the Pharisees. Everyone else listened as Jesus told more stories that day, and they learned how God treasures every child, every man, and every woman. Long ago, word spread throughout the land of a wonderful teacher in Jerusalem. It was Jesus, the Son of God. He helped people who were sick. and encourage those who were lonely. He answered their questions and told them about God. Jesus traveled from place to place, and wherever he went, people wanted to hear what he had to say. <laughs> you know, the angels of children are always very close to God in heaven. my baby pray for my child no go away one of Jesus's disciples was upset can't you see Jesus is too busy to waste his time on children wait my father's kingdom is made up of people who trust and love like children do to God every child is a special treasure as my disciple you should know I could never turn children away I'm sorry, Jesus. Here. Please, come back. I was wrong. Jesus will bless your children. Jesus was never too busy for anyone. 
young or old, sick or well. <laughs> Teacher! If you really know all the answers, tell me. How can I get into heaven? You've studied God's law. What do you think? Well, it says to love God with all my heart and mind and strength. And I should love my neighbors and other people as much as I love myself. That's right. But wait! I understand everything but that last part. Who are my neighbors? And how do I love others? So, what's your answer, Jesus? There's the story of a young man. He left Jerusalem on a trip to Jericho. The young man checked his money carefully, as his father had always told him to. And then began his journey. Morning. Good morning. Along the way, the man greeted other travelers, including a priest from the temple. Have a safe journey. And you also. As his journey continued, he came upon another traveler. A Levite. Levites help the priests in the temple. Thank you. Thank you, my friend. Good journey to you! And to you! As time passed, the traveler saw fewer and fewer people on the road. <laughs> so I'm not alone. What a beautiful bird! I remember seeing such a bird once. Oh, Papa! Can we look at the birds? <laughs> we always do, son. Ah! Ah! Oh, Papa, don't you just love the birds? Love the birds! Ah! Love the birds! Come on, your mother sent us to buy almonds for our dinner. down the street from us, don't they? Yes, they're our neighbors. They're good people. Oh, Papa, look! <laughs> Who's that man? Him? He's not from Jerusalem. He's from Samaria. That's a Samaritan? Stay here, son. The Samaritans are not like our neighbors. They are our enemies and can't be trusted. The boy was taught to fear anyone from a different place. Always remember, beware of the Samaritans. Beware of the Samaritans. The traveler was completely alone on the road when a stranger approached. He was frightened because his father had always warned him to be afraid of people from other places. But the foreigner did not bother him.
Greetings, little fellow. Here's a treat for you. Oh, uh, sorry, I didn't see you. Good day, stranger. How are you? Hello. Are you from Jerusalem? Oh, that's a relief. It's good to see neighbors so far from home. Ow! You have a firm grip, friend. You haven't felt anything yet. <gasps> Grab him! W w what are you doing? Please stop! This. We're neighbors! So give us all your money, neighbor! <laughs> Let's get out of here! The thieves took the traveler's money and jewelry, and they almost took his life. could hear his cries for help, so he tried to crawl back to the road. The poor traveler lay in the ditch for hours. Someone's coming. How fortunate. It's the priest. He'll help me. But I'm so, so tired. The traveler needed help, but he was too weak to call out. Hmm. What's this? Someone should help this poor man. The priest passed the traveler on the opposite side of the road. Oh, the priest. <coughs> Where did he go? Please! 
Please, friend. No. No, not me. Please. Like the priest before him, the Levite passed on the other side of the road. What will I do? What will I do? Isn't there anyone who will help me? By late afternoon, the poor traveler had grown very weak. Hello, little friend. I'm afraid I, I won't make it through the night. Tell me, God, where are my neighbors now that I need them? At sunset, another traveler came down the road. Someone's coming. Always remember, beware of the Samaritans. Just when I need help the most, along comes a Samaritan. Maybe he hasn't seen me. Is it? This is medicine for your cuts and scrapes. Now, this should help. I don't understand. I'm going to take you to a safe place tonight. But why? You're a Samaritan. Ah, then you have met my people before. Travelers passing by couldn't believe their eyes. A Samaritan was helping an Israelite. Don't talk. Save your strength for our journey ahead. I hope this doesn't hurt too much. The Samaritan led his donkey to a small inn. Was there an accident? Is he all right? No, we must get him inside. Of course. That man, he's alive. Yes, I, s I saw him too. But who is that with him? 
Why, it's a Samaritan! But a Samaritan wouldn't help an Israelite, would he? Just rest now. Thank you. All night, the Samaritan cared for the injured man. He's looking much better. I must travel on business today. Take this money and pay for anything he needs until I get back. When I return, I'll pay you for any other expenses. I can't thank you enough. I'll see you in a few days. I asked God where my neighbors were when I needed them. He has given me the answer. And the Samaritan did as he promised. A few days later, he took the traveler back to Jerusalem. So tell me, which man was the neighbor to the traveler? The priest, the Levite, or the Samaritan? Well, that's easy. The one who cared for him. As we should all do, showing kindness to everyone. So don't just love the people in your family or your friends. Love everybody 
especially those in need. Live your life like the Good Samaritan. I will, Jesus. <laughs> Let me help you, young neighbor. The story Jesus told that day spread throughout the world. And now, a person who helps someone in need is called a Good Samaritan. In the town of Bethany, there was a lot of celebrating. But not everyone had heard the wonderful, miraculous news. Excuse me. Uh, pardon me. What's going on? Haven't you heard? A good friend of ours has died. Really? Then why is everyone so happy? Because he has come back to life. That's impossible. That would... <laughs> would be a miracle. I'd sooner believe that my donkey talks. Who is this man? No ordinary man, that's for sure. His name is Jesus, and he's the Son of God. We don't blame you for not believing us. We'd think the same thing if we didn't know Jesus and hadn't seen the miracles ourselves. Oh, <laughs> excuse me. I'm Peter. And I'm Andrew. Come, sit with us. Andrew introduced Jesus to me. I liked him the very first time I met him. Peter told the traveler that a few days after meeting Jesus, they were all invited to a wedding. Even Jesus' mother Mary was there. Halfway through the party, the groom saw that the wine was almost gone. Without wine, there wouldn't be anything to drink, and the party might end early. They have no wine. Is there anything you can do to help? But it's not time to let people know who I am. Okay. Do whatever he tells you to do. Go and fill six empty jars with water. Then pour the water for all the wedding guests. I don't believe it! This is the best wine I've ever tasted! Huh? The groom didn't know where the wine came from. But Andrew and Peter knew. It was Jesus' first miracle. 
Mm. That could have been some trick, don't you think? No, it definitely wasn't a trick. We saw it with our own eyes. And that was just the beginning of his miracles. Like the time we were about to fish. Peter explained how Jesus was teaching a large group of people about the kingdom of God. Hello again. Please, no pushing. May I join you? Of course. Let's go out into the water. Jesus spoke to the crowd on shore for a little while longer, then said, Peter, sail out into deeper water and let's fish. <laughs> but Jesus, we fished all night and caught nothing. Maybe so, but now put your nets into the water and see what you catch. Anything you say, Jesus. Our nets are about to break! <laughs> We're going to need another boat! <laughs> This is fantastic. We have so many fish, we're going to sink. Peter, Andrew, it's time to stop fishing now. What? Come with me, and I'll teach you how to be fishers of men. So Andrew and Peter quit their jobs. They stopped fishing so they could be with Jesus and learn from him. After that, they met James and John, who also joined Jesus. They became Jesus' closest friends and followed him wherever he went to teach people. We were the first of his followers, his disciples. This is James and John. So the boatload of fish was another miracle. That's oh, right. That's right. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe Jesus had a knack for fishing. I'm a pretty good fisherman myself, you know. Oh, that was just the beginning. There were so many other miracles. Oh, uh, this is Philip and Thomas. There was the time Jesus was teaching inside a friend's house. James told how the house was packed with people who had come to hear Jesus. We'll never get close enough for him to help our sick friend. Hmm, maybe there's more than one way to get inside. So remember, with faith, you can do anything. What are they doing? Away. Go away, do you hear? No, wait. Don't you see how hard they work to get their sick friend inside the house? What's going to happen? All of the bad things you have done in your life no longer matter. I forgive you of your sins. What? Jesus can't forgive this man. Everyone knows that only God can forgive someone who is bad. Who does he think he is? When I say I forgive your sins, there's no way of proving that I've really done anything. True, true. But you will see my power if I heal this man's body, too. Time to get up and walk home. Glory to God! This really is His Son!
If Jesus can cure a sick man, then it's true that he can forgive sins too. Look, Jesus has healed me. And then the man and his four friends shouted for joy and sang all the way home. That sounds like a miracle. But maybe the man wasn't really sick and he just tricked Jesus. What's this? Someone who doesn't believe Jesus' miracles? He thinks they're just tricks. A minute ago, you said you were a pretty good fisherman. Once I caught a camel fish this big. But have you ever been able to make a storm go away? <laughs> no one can do that. There was the time when all of us were sailing across a lake. I'm tired and need to rest a little while. Peter, why don't you have more faith? There's no reason to be frightened when I'm with you. It's a miracle. Even the wind and water obey him. I... I don't know what to say. I hardly believe my ears. If only I could see such miracles with my own eyes. I've seen them with my eyes I've seen my friend named Jesus Turn water into wine Seeing is believing Believe in what I see When you look within your heart You'll see what I mean I can almost see the miracles Right before my eyes He fills the nets of fishermen Turns water into wine he feeds the hungry, cures the lame, gives sight to the blind. When I look within my heart, miracles come alive. I believe in miracles. I believe in Jesus. I believe in miracles. The power of God is with us. my doubts far away If only I had seen with my own eyes Sometimes my brother you've got to have faith There is a man in Israel He's doing wondrous things They say he is the Son of God Jesus is his name I believe in I believe in Jesus, I believe in miracles, the power of God is with us.
The disciples then told about the day when Jesus was stopped by two blind men. Jesus, please, please heal us. Do you really think I can make you see again? Oh, yes. We've heard all about you. You are the true Son of God. We know you can make us see again. Then what you believe can happen, will happen. Just keep on believing. First, we could only see darkness. Now we can see the light of the world. Oh, what a miracle that must have been. Please, don't stop there. The disciples then explained the more people learned about Jesus, the more they hungered for his teachings. Like the day in Galilee, when he spoke to a crowd of 5,000 people. It was a wonderful day. Almost like a big surprise picnic. Can't everyone go home now so they can get something to eat? But Peter, there is so much more I want to tell them. Philip, where can we buy enough food for all these people? It would take eight months of work to pay for all the food for a crowd this size. Jesus, I found a boy who has five loaves of bread and two fish. The boy gladly gave Jesus his food. After blessing the food, Jesus gave it to his disciples to hand out. It was just a little bit of food, but it filled every basket they had and kept filling them. And after everyone had eaten, they collected the leftovers and found that there was enough to still fill every basket. Jesus had performed another miracle but the day wasn't over yet. Right after the wonderful picnic, Jesus sent his disciples back across the lake. Look, there! What is it? A ghost! Don't be afraid. I'm coming to help you. Jesus, is it all right for me to come out to you? Come ahead, Peter. on water? Uh, help me! Jesus, help me! Uh. Why did you doubt me, Peter? Oh, oh look, look. look! Truly, you are the Son of God. Why did you sink, Peter? Because at that moment, I lost my faith. I didn't totally believe in Jesus or what he was doing, but he showed me how. Greetings, Thaddeus. Oh, for such wonderful things to happen, Jesus must truly be the Son of God. But we haven't told you about one of the greatest miracles of all. James told about the time when Jesus heard some very bad news about his friend, Lazarus. Lazarus has died. Oh, how sad. We're sorry, Jesus. Don't be, my friends. He's dead, but I'm going to bring him back to life. When I do, 
It will help you to believe in me. They found Lazarus' sisters waiting in front of the burial tomb. Jesus? I'm sure Lazarus wouldn't have died if you had been there. Martha, anyone who believes in me will live again, even if he has died. Do you believe that? Yes, because I believe you are God's son. Then take away this stone. God, may everyone now see that you have sent me to give life. Lazarus, come out. Jesus must be the Son of God. Then Peter told the traveler about Jesus' most important, most wonderful miracle. It happened three days after his own death. It was on a Sunday when John and Peter went to where Jesus was buried. But he was gone. Jesus came back to life. He then visited his disciples. They first saw him down by the water. What are we supposed to do now? We should become fishermen again. What else can we do? The sea is completely empty. Yes, we fished all night and we haven't caught a thing. Hello. Have you caught any fish? Not even one. Try again. I what was was saying? I don't Throw your net over the right side of the boat. <laughs> hey, look! It's Jesus! Quick, let's row to shore! You go ahead, I can't wait. Good morning, Peter. Call to the others. Let's have fish for breakfast. In all, Jesus has been here with us for 40 days now, telling us about the kingdom of God. Oh, how wonderful. I only wish that I... Peter, there you are. Oh, hey, good, to you. Yeah. good to see you. I give you my blessings. And now it is time for me to return to heaven so I can be with my Father. Now go out into the world and teach everyone you meet about me. Remember, I'll always be with you through the Holy Spirit. We must leave now, my friend. I and the others are going to Jerusalem to begin our life's work, to tell others like yourself about Jesus. Remember everything that we've told you today and believe in the miracles of Jesus. I believe. I believe. I believe.